Hello everyone. Recently my friend's garage door opener failed and what's interesting is he has seven garage doors and only one of them failed. In fact the one that is least used, the one that's most infrequently used was the opener that failed. So we decided to do a little bit of troubleshooting on it and because we have uh, good control boards and good power supplies, in this particular case this was a Rainer unit but it's the same guts as used in a lot of LiftMasters, Chamberlain, Rainer, a whole bunch of other different brands where the, the internal guts are all exactly the same. So in this particular case, uh, he has a power supply and a what I call a communications board or a logic board or a control board. You know, it has the radio on it and the tension adjustments, the, uh, the high and low limits, and the antenna wire sticking out out of it. So that's the con what I call the control logic board or communications board. And that's connected to a power supply, which is this particular board you see in front of you. And we determined that the power supply was bad by just swapping uh, logic boards and swapping power supplies and finding that uh, the, the logic boards worked on all the units, uh, in including the one out of this defective failed unit. Uh, but the power supply did not work with any of the other logic boards that were in the good openers. So we finally figured out that it was, uh, this guy here was the culprit. And we did a lot of research on it, looked at all the parts. There really aren't that many parts on this to fail. It's a transformer, uh, a bunch of diodes, very simple full-wave bridge power supply, uh, a capacitor, uh, one large electrolytic capacitor, this blue one you see right here. Um, but couldn't find any obvious signs. And, uh, in fact, testing this with no control board hooked to it. So let's say testing this no load, the power supply actually looked good. So that led me to believe that maybe there was a part here that once you put a load on it, once you connect it to the logic board or have it try to do some work and turn the motors on, that the power supply was not able to supply the power. And sure enough, the symptom was uh, when, you, when you press the actuator, when you press the button, you would hear a click but the motors would not start, uh, which meant that the relays weren't staying closed long enough to allow the motors to run. So I finally decided that maybe it was, it's all in the power supply and not the relays. And after a very, very close examination, really couldn't find any bad parts. So tested all the diodes, they're all good, no burn traces on the board. Everything looked uh, completely normal. But lo and behold, uh, the I decided to just troubleshoot one part component, and that was this capacitor. And so when we removed the capacitor, immediately we saw leakage. And this is the this is the bad capacitor here. We there was no bulging on the capacitor. The capacitor looked perfectly fine. No bulging on the sides, no bulging on the top. But once we removed the capacitor, you could see that the capacitor in fact had leaked. There was damage onto the board and there were um, leakage marks that showed some of the fluid or oil, whatever is inside this can, that's sealed inside this can, had leaked out. Uh, and it was really interesting to me because I've seen a lot of failed capacitors, but in this particular case there were no signs, mechanical signs, that the capacitor had failed until you took it out of the circuit, measured it, and then also saw that it had leaked. So the capacitor that was required uh, to be replaced is a uh, 330 microfarad 330 microfarad 35 volts. Well, of course I didn't have one of those in my bag of parts, my electronic parts. I happen to have a 330 microfarad 50 volts. And so you can always use, in this application, provided you have the space, you can always use a higher rated voltage. But you want to be as close as you can to the original manufacturer's capacitance rating. And so 330 microfarad capacitor replacement to replace the original one, which is 330 microfarad. But as you can see, the 50 volt capacitor is a little bit taller, and maybe it'll be a little more tolerant. Um, we were fortunate in this particular application because even though you put a taller capacitor here in place of the blue one, there's no interference with the uh, logic board, as you can see in this picture. When the logic board is plugged into this connector here, the board does not cover the capacitor. So 
I could easily uh, use the taller capacitor or even lay the capacitor over on its side if, if uh, it was interfering. So that's what we did. But this is another board that's exactly like it. And uh, so that's what we did to replace it. The parts are really cheap. I mean, I think you could probably go on, on eBay and pick up five of them for a buck or less delivered from Asia. You gotta wait a while, but uh, for, for less than a dollar, I mean, each capacitor probably, you, you know, with a little bit of luck, you could pick one up for 25 cents or even less. But thought I'd share this with you. A simple 25 cent part uh, solved our problem and we were able to put the opener back together again use all the existing parts and it's as good as new. So that's a really inexpensive fix. It's really simple to do and if you've got the part it's worth experimenting. I, in many cases when you get an electrical strike or surge or something like that in, in nearby it'll wipe out a lot of these controls and there's too much damage to repair. But those boards are expensive so I thought in this particular case uh, I think the new board delivery was in the 75 or 80 dollar range directly from LiftMaster, Chamberlain, Rayner, or whatever you want to call them. And I thought, well, before we spend 75 or 80 bucks, let's throw a 25 cent part in and see if it works. So you can see the relation positioning of this power supply to the uh, logic board. In some of the designs, you'll see the power supply and the logic board are all one board uh, in some openers, but in a lot of openers, they're two completely separate boards. Unfortunately, you can't buy just the power supply or you can't buy just the control logic board from the manufacturer. You can get them on eBay once in a while. But most people, if they're selling a board, don't really know, if, you know if it's good or bad. Let's say they had a failed opener and they pulled the two boards apart and you don't know whether you're getting the good part or a bad part. But uh, we thought we'd try this, and it was successful, so I'm sharing it with you. If this is in any way helpful, give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate it, and uh, good luck with your troubleshooting.